Last year, Oxfam put out a report where we said that 85 richest people in the world own as much as the bottom half of the world, 3.5 billion people. Now, that 85 figure in the last 12 months has come down to 80, showing that inequality is rising and rising fast. And now we've also put out a figure that the 1%, the richest 1%, if the trend doesn't change, will own more than the rest of us, the 99% by 2016. This is dangerous. It's bad for democracy, for stable societies. It's also ba bad for growth. The poor hurt. They hurt in two ways. One, there is less of the pie for them to have but also there's a smaller pie because growth is hurt by this extreme inequality. The, the trouble is this is the wrong crowd, isn't it, to bring that message to, because what we've got along here is some of the wealthiest CEOs in the world running some of the largest companies who you could argue are part and parcel of a system that continues to reinforce the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. Um, is anybody here listening to what you have to say? Oh, yes. They're listening. But are they, and they acting on it? And they must listen. That's why I'm here, to call for action. Because actually, a few years ago, if you talked about inequality, you'd be accused of participating in the politics of envy. But now, it's right there in the mainstream. From the Pope, who called it a social evil, to President Obama, to the head of economic institutions like the World Bank and the IMF, Christine Lagarde is now a big champion of tackling inequality. So it's now in the mainstream. The question is what we should do, the solutions, and that's why I'm here. Winnie, can I challenge you a little bit on the assumption that the bottom 99%, that their income and their standard of living isn't getting better a bit as well? Because I'll leave the 1% to whatever they're up to. There's always going to be that stunningly rich echelon. But we hear stories on a, on a regular basis about millions of Indians being dragged out of poverty by the economic recovery, about the same from rural Chinese actually having better standards of living, better diets than they've ever had, better education as well. So I just want to challenge you a little bit on, on, on that bottom 99% and perhaps the, the ones at the bottom end of it. I keep hearing stories about people being dragged out of poverty because of initiatives that are carried on by the participants here at the World Economic Forum. It's true that many, many millions of people have been lifted out of poverty, but it's also true that poverty is still here with us mm. and it's not going to end with this kind of extreme inequality. Take a country like Zambia. Zambia has been growing because of the good copper prices and has now reached lower middle income level. But the numbers of people living in extreme poverty have also increased in that same country. And we also know that p poor people, really, it's not so much about a figure, a statistic. Sure. It's about lives. Let it's me... about not having health. It's about babies dying before the age of one. It's about not eating. It's about one out of every nine people who goes to bed hungry.